From the ruins of the former settlements of the Inca and Tiahuanaco cultures on Lake Titicaca, the Cayahuaya priests worship Tata Inti, the sun god. At dawn, to bring good luck, they burn amulets and llama fetuses, and the smoke rises, carrying the invocation to Viracocha, who created the world from this island of the sun. This enigmatic god ordered men to go forth and multiply. He then disappeared into the west and was never seen again. According to the eminent archaeologist Federico Kaufmann Doig, the figure worshipped at the Gate of the Sun in Tiahuanaco represents Viracocha, the creator of the Andean world, which is surrounded by mythical beings with condor like heads. The colossal monoliths in Tiahuanaco seem to want to speak to us of the secrets which this mysterious culture of Titicaca still hides. Some writers have even described them as gods from other planets and have come up with elaborate theories. What is certainly true, however, is that these stone sculptures continue to astound even the most distinguished archaeologists and specialists. The Tiahuanaco culture appeared around the 4th century AD on the Bolivian Plateau, just a few kilometers from the shores of Lake Titicaca. From there it spread south, where it merged with the Huari, heirs to a different tradition, the Paracas Nazca culture. Titicaca is the largest lake in South America and one of the highest in the world. It lies at 3,820 meters above sea level, covers 9,000 square kilometers, is about 230 kilometers long by almost 100 wide and has a maximum depth of 457 meters. The Tiahuanaco culture went through a number of different phases. The early phase, the classical age, and the post-Tiahuanaco culture. It was a society profoundly marked by its religious beliefs. The inhabitants of the Island of the Sun to this day retain reminders of this religion in the liturgy of their rituals. Before undertaking any action, they call upon their gods, especially Pachamama, the Earth Goddess. On the islands of the Sun and Moon, we find numerous ruins of Tiahuanaco origin and which were later occupied by the Incas. These are sacred places for the peoples of the Andes. All around, their offerings can be seen in the shape of piles of stones looking towards the snow-capped peaks believed to be the home of the gods. The ancient mystical observatories are still used by the shaman in their ceremonies of invocation and meditation.
The monumental city of Tiahuanaco was built during the Classical Age. The famous Barbado or Contiki monolith presides over the semi-subterranean temple. Were the builders of this colossal city gods or giants? The transport of the enormous stones and the manner in which they are expertly fitted together have given rise to numerous theories, but none of these is universally accepted and Tiahuanaco remains an enigma. Was there a flood at Titicaca? According to legend, the earth was inhabited by giants called Chulpas, who had become powerful and wise. But their culture degenerated into violence, and so the god Viracocha punished them by sending a devastating flood, killing them all. The first land to emerge from the waters was the Island of the Sun, and there Viracocha created Manco Capac and Mama Oglio, the first human couple, and gave them a scepter of gold. Manco Capac threw it with all his strength, and where it fell, that is where the Inca Empire was born. The majority of the coast of Peru is dry desert land. Vast expanses of dunes bury everything in their relentless advance. The air becomes grey and exfusciating, visibility reduced to almost nil. Nonetheless, this inhospitable land was the birthplace of great civilizations which constructed irrigation channels and created gardens in the desert. With their advanced techniques, they developed agricultural societies capable of supporting large numbers of inhabitants. This is the case of the Chimu culture, which from the year 1000 to 1470 AD ruled over 700 kilometers of coast and built cities like this one, Chan Chan, perhaps the largest city in the world at the time, with around 100,000 inhabitants. It covers an area of 20 square kilometers and is composed of nine distinct areas, separated by trapezoidal walls from six to nine meters high. Each one corresponded to a different Chimu monarch. A network of passages led from these districts of the city to the great ceremonial square. All the buildings are of clay, the material used by all the cultures of the Peruvian desert. Around the ceremonial altars, the walls were decorated with bas reliefs, which represented fishing nets. Chan Chan lived in close contact with the sea. Fishing was a major part of the daily lives of its inhabitants. Canvases cover the excavation, protecting it from the climatological phenomenon El Niño. There's virtually no rain in this region, but during the past century, a number of storms have destroyed and disfigured the city's fragile walls. It was a very hierarchical society. Power was held by the great Chimu. Below him were the chiefs who governed the different valleys. Then came the professionals and the tax collectors who lived in the cities, and finally the peasants, farmers and fishermen. This culture was highly skilled in the working of gold and many objects made of this metal have been discovered. The majority of these are clearly of a religious nature. The Chimu worship the moon and the sun, as well as the mummies of their monarchs, which they would remove from their tombs on special occasions. The masks with blind eyes were funeral masks and were placed on the faces of the mummies. Their pottery has also provided many valuable clues about the daily lives of the Chimu. It is decorated with depictions of many of their habits and customs, like this pot, which shows a fisherman with his cattail horse. <laughs> 